Today I'm here to share with you the last clue progress on my slip stravaganza shawl, a finished spin, and a spin currently in progress. This is Pineapple Knits, a video cast about knitting, spinning, and weaving. You can connect with me on social media at Pineapple Yarn, and you can visit me on my website at pineappleyarn.com. Thank you so much for joining me again this week, and if this is your first time viewing the show, welcome. I'm so happy you're here. I'm coming to you today from coastal South Carolina, where we're coming down from a couple of days of really cold weather. Well, cold for me, really too cold for me, <laughs> but it has really got my sweater mojo, my sweater knitting mojo going because when it's cold and I feel like my sweaters just aren't warm enough, yeah, just yeah, I need to knit some more sweaters, I think. But today we are in, I think, the mid 70s. So it's this, even this sweater is a little warm. But um, yeah, it's really nice weather, so no complaints. I have had a really great week crafting. The slip extravaganza has been really taking up all of my time as normal. And I'm very close to being done with the last clue. So let me show you that progress. And before I show you that, I actually should tell you what I'm wearing. <laughs> this is my Inside Story sweater by Heidi Kermeyer. I knit it a year ago in one of my colorways, Cook Pine. And this is a really, I love this color green. It's just, it's kind of a deep color green. It has some black in it. So you just really get that depth. And the sweater itself is really cute. It's um, a turtleneck and then it has some detail down the side. It's knit in reverse stockinette. So it has a really nice texture and the fit's great. I, I love this sweater and um, just really all of Heidi Kermeyer's uh, patterns in general. Um, I've actually been on the lookout for some more sweater patterns and definitely have been looking at her patterns some more. All right, on to slip extravaganza. If you have not seen the last clue, definitely skip ahead. But I'm sure by now nothing is really much of a surprise with this pattern because it has been out. Uh, the last clue has been out for nearly a week now. And so I'm going to go ahead and show you what my progress is on it. I should just say this before I show it to you. I am over 900 stitches on the needles right now. Yes, 900 stitches, <laughs> which is just insane. I mean, really, it's, yeah. So I don't have a long enough circular to actually show you, so I'm just gonna show you. This is what I have right now. And if you recall from the last clue, I had a, a whole series of short row triangles on the bottom. So this is what each triangle looks like now. Let's see if I can get it. There we go. So each triangle is going to be bordered with this really awesome chevron pattern in each of the main of the contrast colors. And so the small, well, let me back up and say that this is the Slip Stravaganza Mystery Knit Along pattern from Stephen West. And with all of his, let's say a, a majority of his patterns, they have options for a small size of shawl and a large size. And so this shawl, even being the small size, is going to be massive. It's, it's going to be quite large. And the large sizes are legitimate blankets. I mean, they're, they're huge, but the small size are these three colors around the triangle. And then if you want the large size, you just repeat these three colors again. So when this is blocked, 
Again, I'm being very, very careful with this because it is so close to the needle tips and I don't want to lose any stitches. But when this is blocked, it will actually be upside down from what I'm showing you. So this will be the top of the shawl. And then the bottom will be all of these amazing chevrons, uh, amazing chevrons on the border. So you can kind of see them right there, how they will look. Obviously, they won't be straight. It'll be more of a chevron-y zigzag pattern. And so what I have left on this shawl, I only have one row left of this contrast color number three. And then I will be finished with the colors. And then I have an I-cord bind off in the, the main color, which is this caramel brown tone. You can see that it's very predominant throughout the shawl. And so the I-cord bind, bind off will probably take quite a while, but I am so close to the end. And I'll tell you this week, especially with the, the, 900, the 900 stitch rows, I mean, I was just very on the fence about, should I just do one color, bind off? Should I just bind off in, in an I-cord? You know, should I even add the colors? And then when I saw some of the finished projects with the colors, they really make the shawl because they have so, um, there's just such a small amount of this main color that it really makes all the contrast colors stand out and they kind of have their shining moment, if you will. And I really loved my contrast colors even more than my, my main color, to be honest. Um, I do love my main color, but I love, you y'all know, I love these bright colors. So I really just had to stay focused and knit the pattern as written. And I'm glad I did because I think this will be really, really nice to have some more color in here instead of just a neutral. So yeah, that's what I've been knitting on this week. The rows have been taking me so long. I don't even know how long um, I was going to time myself, but I did get speedier after removing all of the stitch markers. And so it was kind of uh, notorious in this pattern that there are going to be 54 stitch markers, I think 54, just for the increases and the decreases on the chevron pattern on the zigzag. And once I had the pattern established, I removed all the stitch markers and just started counting in between each increase and decrease. It was so much easier. And I could do it while watching TV and even at night because that's when I knit. And so um, it ended up working out for me much better than having all the stitch markers. So yeah, this will be so, it will be so nice to have it finished and be able to wear it. And I don't think it will be too complicated blocking. I think it will be nice. So yeah, it'll be really nice to have off the needles. I mean, just to have the, the project accomplished is a big deal, but then also to be able to move on to other things. <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> so yeah, this is, uh, it's been a really fun knit along and it's amazing what you can accomplish when you really stay focused. And I mean, cause it's been a month, I think since we started the knit along and that's a lot of knitting for one month so anyway that's my progress on that yeah maybe next week I'll have it finished I hope to have it finished and blocked and ready to show you next week that's the goal <laughs> but I do want to show you I want to move on to spinning and I don't know if I've shown you these yet but I thought I would just if I have, feel free to skip this section of the episode. But I wanted to show you my finished skeins of... I did show you these, I think. But I guess I wanted to give you stats on it. So these were a spin that I did from a Hedgehog Fibers um, kind of odds and ends bag of fiber. 
and I spun these on my Kromsky Minstrel. I only have one spinning wheel and that's fine. It works out great. <laughs> But these were um, mostly tweed with, I would say mostly tweed. There were some merino um, fibers, you know, 100% merino. I didn't include any of the silk pieces. And so I have talked about this in other episodes if you wanna go back and watch that again. But let me go ahead and tell you some stats on this. So these were, well, it was six six 6.9 ounces, um, almost 200 grams, so 196 grams. And I ended up getting, so for this large skein, it ended up being just over 300 yards, which is pretty crazy. And then um, the smaller skein ended up being 140 yards, which is, it's really interesting if you think about the yardage and the weight and how all that plays out. I spun this um, with a, a backward, a short backward draft with smoothing. I would say it's probably about a DK weight, especially after I saw the yardage to the weight of the skeins. I'm sure I have some bits and pieces in there that are a nice worsted. <laughs> I wasn't super concerned with having this perfectly even, to be honest. I just wasn't, I wanna have fun spinning it. And I did, I had a really great time. It ended up being a beautifully, beautifully soft yarn. And what I want to start doing, I'm definitely gonna start, after I finish my slip extravaganza, I'm going to start spinning a lot of my hedgehog fiber clubs and then maybe use them in all together in a sweater. Not all together because I have a lot of clubs, <laughs> but I'd like to do a nice um, DK to worsted weight sweater. So I've been looking at that. And yeah, just something like super comfortable and simple and um, like this sweater is so comfortable. It is so comfortable. And I would love to knit something like that out of hand spun. And so that's kind of my future goals here after slip extravaganza. But I do have another spin that I started. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you that. This was from uh, Fiber from Three Waters Farm. It's called Summer Palette. And you can see they're, the colors in here are beautiful. They're like a rusty orange and plum and moss green and bright turquoise. So pretty. And so I started spinning this. It's a 100% Rambouillet, which I love to spin. And I have the second bobbin started. But I split this into um, three sections. And I'll go ahead and show you. I actually have a big chunk that I haven't split at all. And this will be for my third bobbin. This is a really, really pretty, pretty fiber. Are those colors pretty. And then I just, I really appreciate that pop of turquoise <laughs> because I love bright colors. But then also it just adds a, it's going to add a ton of interest to the finished yarn, but that's so pretty, isn't it? Really pretty. The fiber is beautifully dyed and it's just a really soft, soft fiber. Excellent. It's just a really excellent place to purchase fiber, just really high quality fiber. But this is my first bobbin. I am spinning this incredibly thin for me. It's so thin. I, I plan on doing a three ply and I'm spinning it short backward draft with smoothing and I'm really taking care to make this as consistent and even as possible. So pretty. As you can tell, it's very thin. The reason I'm doing a true, two, a true three ply on this is because I want to I want the end result to be a very consistent yarn. And so I kind of feel like if you have a three ply, it, um, 
it just kind of balances itself out. <laughs> All the other plies kind of balance each other out, I guess, and it results in a really pretty three ply. So here's what I am doing as far as color management. I am, I split this up into thirds and each third looks just like this with the turquoise near the beginning and then ending in these beautiful deep plums and reds. And so that's what it looked like. So the first one, what I did is I split the, this top into very thin, uh, fairly, yeah, they're fairly thin pieces. So strips all the way down. And then for this, and then spun each strip individually. The second, um, let's see, the second bobbin, so the, the bobbin I'm working on now, I actually took and split this again into very thin strips. But because I don't want it to line up, I started spinning from, I think each the first piece I started spinning maybe in the middle. I think maybe I took a piece and split it in the middle and then started spinning that and added this onto the end. I can't exactly remember what I did, but I offset it, if that makes sense. I offset the colors and just the way they're spun. And so hopefully that will work as far as doing more of like a fractal spin where the colors don't line up with each other. And then this third one, what I'd really like to do for the third future bobbin, I'm going to split each of these colors up. So like this light orange, I will break off. This deeper rust, break off. Um, the plum, break off, etc. And so each color will have a chunk and then I will spin each color individually. So I'll have long, sear. it'll be a long series of color so long chunks of, or long series of turquoise, a long series of red, etc. I'm, I'm sure you get the idea. And so hopefully that will result in a really pleasing yarn, a really fractal yarn. It'll look, um, especially with a thin three ply, it will look just really blended. And then it'll have those pops of turquoise, which will be really pretty. And before I leave this spin, I want to show you how I store each fiber. So what I do is I basically strip the fiber into these long thin strips and then I just take and loosely wind it around my hand and then wind it like that and I'm just left with all these little bundles and that's how I spin each one. And it's very satisfying because even if I don't have a ton of time to spin, which I haven't because of the slip extravaganza, um, I can spin one or I can spin two. And I feel like I've done something. I've made a small amount of progress. So, um, so I do like spinning that way. And also because I am a fairly new spinner, it helps me just stay consistent with, especially when I'm doing a thin, I'm really trying to make this spin as, as consistent as possible. So that is my current spin. So as soon as I'm done with Slip Stravaganza, I will focus on this, get it done. I do have a project that I can't show you yet and it will be probably quite a while until I can show you. I actually just purchased a 32 inch Kromsky harp, which is a rigid huddle loom. And if you've watched episodes ago, you know I've been wanting a larger loom and I bought the 10 inch loom just to see if I really would like a larger loom, if I really enjoyed weaving, if, you know, just to learn the process. And so I did, I purchased it, put it together and actually, Put the warp on or warped it with my advent calendar from this year so it is gorgeous it's actually right here right next to me and I wish so badly I could show you because it is so so gorgeous um, if you can recall I dyed the vitamin C advent calendar this year in a gradient and so it is the warp is absolutely beautiful it's 
going to be really pretty. I'm going to be weaving up some kind of like bolster or like wide throw pillows for my older girls for their beds. And so um, it's going to be a really fun project. I'll be filming it and taking photos. So um, maybe in January or February thereabouts, I will put all that together and show you just so I'd, I don't want to spoil any surprises, obviously. <laughs> So I did actually put the loom together and warp it uh, this weekend. So that was kind of a big project and I'd probably be done with Slip Stravaganza by now, but it's okay, I really wanted to get that done. And speaking of the vitamin C advent calendars, they have all been mailed out. They're on their way to you. So I feel like just a really pleasing sense of relief that those are out the door and that you can enjoy them whenever you want, whenever you receive them, or you can wait until December 1st to open those up. They have been just so much fun to put together this year and I appreciate your orders so much and I hope you absolutely love them. And I did want to let you know that I have three extra that are ready to ship and so those are in my shop right now. If you miss the pre-orders, uh, feel free to go to my website, pineappleyarn.com, and click on Shop Now, which is right on the front page as you go in, and they will be right there, the first listing. So super easy. I will pop those in the mail as soon as you purchase them, and you can enjoy the fun. And I do want to mention the last thing about the advent calendars. When you receive them, um, I have a packing list in there and if you look I, I put a link for a website that is it's unlisted on my website so it's just for my advent calendar recipients and you can go there and I have a ton of resources about the advent calendar this year so it'll be really nice that it is all linked and it's all on any device instead of on paper this year. So definitely don't throw that list away. Visit the link so you can get more information about your advent calendar. Well, that is about it for this week. I am going to head into the dying portion of my studio. I am going to be working on clubs this week. And so the December pre-orders are now up. Can you imagine? Like, I cannot even believe December is just around the corner. And so I am dying up November's clubs right as we speak. And I will also be working on a shop update for you for next week. So I know I had mentioned that I was going to try and squeeze one out this week and I decided against it, so definitely check out the shop update for next Friday, and I will be doing a preview video for that uh, about this time next week. So I hope you are doing so well where you are. I hope you're enjoying your crafting. I hope you have lots of things on the needles or on your wheel. I hope you're working on your crochet, your scrappy blankets. It's a, such a fun time this year. Uh, it's such a fun time of the year to be crafting and getting cozy and preparing for winter. So I hope you're doing all of those things and enjoying your crafting. I'll be back next week with another episode, but until then, I hope you have an awesome day. Bye.